All right, hello everybody, and sorry I got this goofy headset on, but evidently I've been told it records better. Uh, we're going to talk about partial extinguishment of debt in this video. Let me move this thing a little out of the way. And we're in the lecture note on example uh, six. Let me scroll up a little bit. So in example 6b, it works off a schedule that if you've done the other lecture no videos you've seen. I'm going to skip that one because um, what we're really interested in doing is straight line. As a practical matter, on the CPA exam and then on my quizzes and exams, I'll have straight line whenever it's a partial extinguishment. And it's a practical matter because doing a schedule for the effective interest method just takes way too long in a test setting. So uh, these problems will use straight line amortization, which you can end up calculating in just a few seconds. All right, just to reorient you to the bond problem, it's a three-year bond with a $100,000 face value. And um, on January 1, FY2, which is a year after the original issuance, they decide to repurchase only $50,000 in the, of the total $100,000 face value. At that time, the bonds are selling for ninety five. The original bond, the bond was originally issued at a premium at 105,242. So the premium is 5,242. And this example in the lecture note shows that every six months, so three times two is six periods, uh, there's 874 of amortization. So in one year, there's two periods of amortization. So you could take the 5,242 and subtract it from two times 874, starting with the original premium and then subtracting out the amortization to get what's left over. However, I'm gonna show you a little different method. But the thing that we're gonna do first is we're always gonna do the full extinguishment. That's a great place to start because you have to learn how to do that problem anyway. And the partial is just multiplying by one more ratio. So separating out the calculation into two steps like this actually can help you prevent errors. So uh, up here you have the journal entry, and that's fine. You can do a journal entry like this, and this would be your plug number here. So you would end up calculating or putting in the face value, calculating the unamortized premium, calculating um, the price, the repurchase price, and then plugging a credit for a gain and a debit for a loss. The other way to do it is in a column. So in this column I have here, full retirement on the left. You start with your face value at the top. Now to calculate the unamortized premium or discount, in this case we're gonna have a premium, but I'm putting discount here for completeness so that you notice if it's a discount, you have to subtract it from bonds payable. But in this case we started with, what was it, 5,242? premium. So it's going to be um, original issue discount, or in this case, premium, times um, years left over total years, which will equal 5,242. And it's retired in the first year, so it's three minus one year over three, two thirds. And I'm gonna calculate along with you, grab your calculator, convince yourself you can do this in a reasonable amount of time. 5,242 times two and divided by three is 3,495. So this will be an addition of 3,495. In this case, we have no unamortized bond issue costs but it would be the original bond issue cost and then multiplied by the same thing. The total number of years minus how many years have been uh, amortized to date divided by the total number of years, okay? But in this case it's zero, so um, we don't need to calculate that. And then the repurchase price for the full is just the quote, in this case, 95% times 100,000, and it's a reduction. So let me actually, let me put this in parentheses. 
this in parentheses, big parentheses, this in parentheses, just to remind you that it's a reduction. All right, so you have 100,000 minus 95,000, which is 5,000 plus 34.95, and you get a, and we're not really going to call it a uh, 84.95. This is a gain, okay? If it ended up being, I really want to call it negative, but if it had parentheses around it, it would be a loss, and you would end up debiting it. Now, all we have to do is multiply by 50,000 over 100,000, and then we'll get our gain or loss on the partial extinguishment of debt. 4,200, and I'm going to just round it to 48, so approximately. So this would be your answer for the partial. If you were asked for any other part up here, all you do is multiply. So 50,000 times 100 times, so it's times a half in this case. This would be 50,000 times a half. 3, 4, 9, 5, 17, 48. Once again, rounding there. Uh, I lost the marker. Where are you? 1,748. And 95,000 divided by 2. 47,5, of course. Okay. And that's how you do a partial. You do the full, and then you can multiply all the components by the amount retired over the full face value. So this makes it really easy. So say, for example, you have you retire 32,500 of face value. What's the gain or loss? All you have to do is take 32,500 over 100,000 times 8495. So 32,500 divided by 100,000. 8495 times. Looks like 2761. I hope I did my math right there. Living life on the edge. 2761. Okay. So uh, by doing it this way, uh, you make it less likely that you're going to make errors on the unamortized bond issue cost and the premium or discount calculation, which are really the two tricky parts of gain or losses. And that's it for the example 6C.